And now for our weekly news segment. Hello, hi. Hey guys. How do you do? Donnie. Hey, Coming back. Coming back. We got from, his robe uh... on. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird not to see you. There's a sweater. I know. If I do, like, if I put the camera on, it's just going to be annoying. So let's just. It's hanging out with the Tate brothers over there. and. Uh... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's right. How... Yeah, we didn't talk about that last week. Well, because there was a lot going on, but. You know what's funny? People, whenever I mention that I'm from Romania, people don't ask me about Dracula anymore or Transylvania. They just, just... <laughs> they just say, oh, Andrew Tate or oh, Top G. And I'm like, yep, <laughs> Dracula wasn't that bad, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> At least I knew some culture. <laughs> <laughs> now it's over. Now it's yeah. over. I don't know. I mean, obviously I like, and I'm sharing my screen as I speak. Um, so we can get through it but um obviously some of the things that he says are interesting such as you know his anti-government uh, speeches he talks about um wef and how you should be you know disciplined and work hard i i like that part but 99 percent of the things that he says i really don't agree uh like i think one time he said that reading books is for idiots and that he only has life experience <laughs> yeah i think i read that too that was really stupid. Yeah, he's just yeah. like he's like another, you know, he's a Trump character. He's yeah, a, he's a like he just says what he a, thinks. He's a charlatan. Yeah. He's you know doing whatever it takes yeah. to to gain more wealth, and I think he's just using this narrative uh, for purposes of growing his brand, and I think also for purposes of keeping himself out of trouble, right? So yeah, it's, yeah. you don't really argue. They were after me. I told you they were after me. I'm yeah. trying to free the world. Like, okay, <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's he's not, you know, extremely clean in his mannerism. You know, like he he does a lot of bad stuff, such as you know what he's done right now. And is he in jail now? now? I haven't been following it. What? No, I think he got out. Of... No, okay. actually, they got, got his cars and so. Uh, He's in jail with his brother. And he's essentially he's been jail, accused yeah. of money laundering or tax evasion or like what's like the yeah. And then more, more. more I, I mean, think like like right children. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, trafficking, yeah, right? sex trafficking, trafficking, sex yeah, trafficking, sex trafficking yeah. for children. I don't know, but I don't know I don't much know. about it. I didn't really read into it. But anyways, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> what I do know is that he didn't read these articles because he doesn't read. So <laughs> read for, yeah, I don't really know. He's gonna watch. Them, to be yeah. honest. Although, yeah, some of the things that, you know, obviously it's the little I've seen of him, though, like some of it is just a little too much. I feel like it's a shame because he has all these yeah. young young people that are following him. And like he has this basically this army of young men and he's just not instilling the the most ideal ethics. No, no. And if you're not intelligent, then one more point, and that's it. Um, but I even see people here and whenever we see behavior like his. We just say, oh, he's a top G. And it's not necessarily a good thing, you know? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah, people, yeah, they latch on to whatever they see. It's cool. But um, but what's really cool, guys. <laughs> All right, so you can do this fast. Yeah, fast. Let's, 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 yes. let's go. Let's go. Yep, moving fast. Oh, wait, I think, why did it go into? Oh, no. Wait, one second. I don't know why it went to December, but I had January. One second. Let me go into coin cards over quick. Um, all right, there we go. All right, so, um, oh, that, that, that is for December. Okay. Uh, 33% for Bitcoin, 23% for Monero, but this is wor worldwide. And uh, if we go down Canada, sitting at 37% uh, Bitcoin usage, 20% uh, for Ethereum and 12% for um, XMR. And the USA, 65% for Monero and 18% for Bitcoin. And I think this is the highest we've ever seen for Monero in terms of percentage. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I think so. Wow. I think so. But it's really, really high. Um, then I really want to talk about this article. And um, if we can find someone that knows more information, that'll be really cool because it's interesting. And I'll have some more um, articles that it'll be cool if we had guests that uh, talk about them in more detail. But uh, this one is titled The Godfather of Crypto Wants to Create a New uh, Privacy Focused CBDC. Here's how. 
Um, David Chaum explained his game plan to create a CBDC that would also be appreciated by the crypto ecosystem in an exclusive interview. Um, when it comes to crypto, the crypto part of cryptocurrencies, David Chaum's work predates the crypto ecosystem. His efforts as a renowned cryptographer date back to 1989, long before Bitcoin. So he has developed a protocol that acts as the base of DigiCash, the world's first dig digital currency secured by cryptography. As the CEO of Privacy Focus Network developer Alex Elixir, um, David Chom is working with the Swiss Central Bank to develop a central bank digital currency that will that could also track the crypto ecosystem due to its privacy uh, features. And then eCash 2.0, the new project aims to develop digital cash that would be inalienably private and quantum resistant to kind of uh, feeding, which uh, that that is important, you know, especially in the future, not now, but um, quantum resistant resistance in, uh, in currency and not only is going to be crucial, uh, not sure when, but um, I suppose that it's coming. Uh, since the technical details require a deep, a deep understanding of crypto crypto cryptography, <laughs> maybe drink some water. <laughs> there we go. Cointelegraph sat down with Chom at Istanbul Blockchain Week to get a better understanding of the mechanics behind the, the, this crypto-friendly CBDC project. It's so cold outside and then my, my face gets frozen and it's so hard to talk because I just came from outside. Um, censorship resistance CBDC, it all started uh, when Thomas Moser, a board member at Swiss National Bank, invited David Chom at Z uh, to Zurich for a conference and told him he wanted to make eCash great again. Um, and then it talks about as part of the project, which is internally called Project uh, Tur Turbulent, uh, Chom developed a crypto cryptographic protocol that proves that CBDC can protect privacy, be censorship and quantum resistance, scalable and even compatible with uh, DeFi blockchains. All in all, and there's more details about it. All in all, it sounds great, um, but let's see how it's going to turn out. Um, Man, so. I would love to have him at Monerotopia, right? Yeah, that'll be cool. Like, it's really yeah. interesting with yeah, Swiss but... National Bank. Oh, of course yeah. he's, he's like one of the, you know, he's the one of the fathers of of crypto, right? He was doing mm -hmm. crypto before Bitcoin existed. Long before. Yeah, long before. Yeah. So it'd be cool to have him. Yeah. That's, that was I a mean, cool article. He's cited, right? David Chong yeah. cited in the Satoshi white paper, I think, right? I think so. If not, uh, B, uh, B Money by, uh, who was it? Was it David? No, I think it was another guy. That no, that was, uh, B -Money. yeah, I forget the guy's name. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's cool. I hope that we can have them in uh, Mexico. That'll be really cool. And now let's talk about uh, B BitEjo, I think it's called, BitEjo.com. It's a market. It's a Craigslist for crypto, essentially. And you can shop with uh, Bitcoin, Monero, gold, uh, and cash. So, and you can um, you can buy all sorts of stuff. You can buy a uh, ring. Um, it's like Craigslist. Oh, anything, really. Anything. Anything you want, not any anything, but <laughs> well, you, can get of, you can get a hot lot sauce. of things, a lot of things. Look, you get a lot of things, not everything, but you can get Delgado's Fuego hot sauce, Misty Ooh. Uchu, twenty one dollars or delicioso, delicioso, or you can okay. ah, <laughs> where's the Monero? Where's the Monero? I drop down. I don't know, but they accept Monero. Um, for other things, I suppose. <laughs> Not for the hot sauce. Hot sauce. <laughs> Don't buy hot sauce, guys. <laughs> You'll be fine. Um, John Foss posted a tweet. I want to mention this. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but uh, you guys should check it out. Essentially, it talks about, it's a short thread that focuses on uh, various metrics, bringing to light the possibilities of where Monero may be headed in 2023 and beyond. As uh, Body said, John Foss had tweeted in the past, uh, they are really, really uh, bullish on Monero, and Monero has been the best performing uh, cryptocurrency when compared to other major crypto assets. So uh, Monero is down only 23%, while most other others are down over 60%. So um, very bullish news for, for Monero in 2023, and I'm curious of where it's headed. Um, also, uh, let's talk about Atomic Swaps uh, on Mainnet, which is, uh, which is really awesome. Um, 
We have released the first beta version of the Unstoppable GUI. It allows the centralized exchange of mainnet Bitcoin to mainnet Monero using atomic swaps through a graphical interface. And you can uh, visit the download page over here and you can visit the GUI on this link. Sorry for the people on Twitter spaces. Uh, you can join on YouTube if you want to see the, the visuals or all the, all the links are provided for you if you want to check it out later. Uh, but here's, here's the GitHub if you want to look into it. And then here is uh, the Atomic Swap website, unstoppableswap.net. And um, it's still in beta, but um, use it, try it. Why not use a bit of Monero and see how it goes? Or Bitcoin to uh, Monero, rather. Um, but again, just having, you know, uh, Bitejo, and then we covered more markets in the past, and, and this just makes Monero more resilient for, for what's coming or for what may not be coming. You know, why not have all these ways um, to to protect uh, Monero and make it better against everything? I want to cover then uh, MasterCard. And we've seen MasterCard in the past. I think they um, partner with um, Chain Analysis um, in the past. I'm pretty sure I've seen a couple of pictures, pictures on the internet. But this time they partnered with Polygon to launch a web-free musician accel accelerator a program to help um, musicians in the scene and to educate them. They're going to release even um, an NFT collection called the MasterCard Music Pass for those that aren't selected for the program. And the aim is to provide hodlers with educational materials and unique resources through brand co collaborations to help budding musicians learn about web free integrations with the music sector. Um, and that it also says MasterCard has been actively furthering its involvement in the blockchain and crypto sectors. Um, they joined forces with uh, Coinbase in January 2022 to enable the use of MasterCard cards for purchasing NFTs. Uh, they partnered with uh, Paxos to allow banks to offer cryptocurrency trading. Uh, they also launched a crypto fraud protection tool. So MasterCard is really uh, going heavy on, into, into crypto and NFTs. Um, then, of course, we get these articles, and I think I might as well just uh, talk about the slightest one over here. There we go. Um, <laughs> the, again, people use the, um, the FTX collapse and all the bad things that have been happening in crypto to further... Actually, I lost my train of thought. I'll just read the title. And maybe it's going to come back. But the FTX collapse may boost further tr trust in crypto ecosystem. And um, if we scroll down... Oh, yeah, there we go. Because of regulations, right? Um, so the FTX collapse, that's what I was going to say. So the F FTX collapse and all the collapses that we've seen in the past with Luna, um, it's essentially going to help crypto in some sense, but in regulation-wise, it's going to bring more regulation. Um, and then it talks about, uh, let me see where it was. Yeah, more traditional players are entering the space who can help to regulate the sector. This means players who understand regulations as well as the importance of clients, aggregation, stability, and execution, explain Mohidin, a longtime participant in the venture sector and former director at Barclays and partner at the hedge, at the hedge fund, uh, Brevin Howard. Um, and even though the winds of crypto winter may be still blowing, but it doesn't seem to be stopping venture capital firms from piling into cryptocurrencies. And of course, to um, further down um, regulations. And I don't think this one talked about Mika. I think it was the other article. Uh, so let's go into this one. Um, <laughs> there we go. The ECB, ECB, the European Central Bank official, urges CBDC development for the good of cryptocurrency and consumers. So they're pushing regulations. Um, they're pushing CBDC to save us um, from cryptocurrency because, of course, they really care about it. Um, but then they tax us on it because, of course, they like the money that comes from it and the profit, right? Um, but ECB board member Fabio uh, Paneda has woven his enthusiasm for blockchain technology and skepticism of cryptocurrency into an, an argument that supports both. Uh, last year marked the unraveling of the crypto market as investors moved from the fear of missing out, I like this quote, to the fear of not getting out. <laughs> He said um, that observation served as a, a seg to an, an examination of the position that cryptocurrency should be left alone to burn rather than regulate at the risk of legitimizing cryptos. <laughs> but this is a straw man that is immediately taken down. 
Um, first, despite their fundamental flaws, it is not certain that crypto assets will ultimately self-combust. Um, then it talks about, there we go, Mika, yeah. Having established the necessity of regulation, Panetta suggested that the European Union's market markets in crypto assets, Mika, legislation was an important step, but insufficient in regards to crypto asset lending or non-custodial wallet services. In addition, unbacked cryptos should be taxed in accordance with the costs they impose on society. Then it also talks about, and there's one more quote actually, um, trading in, in unbacked digital assets should be treated by regulators like gambling. But ultimately, even CBDC is backed by electricity because it's not physical, it's not like gold. It doesn't matter if we have electricity or not, gold is not gonna go away. So CBDC and crypto are kind of the same in this regard because a line is on the internet. So you know they're both backed by the internet they're not backed by anything else i'm sure that if um you trade gold for cbdc they're not gonna like it so um it's, it's an interesting statement um then i want to talk about um el salvador and um actually no let's let's go to this one first right here there we go uh because this one is a bit faster Shiba Inu deemed the bank tokens are yielding nearly a thousand for Solana liquidity providers. The meme coin is up over 150% in the past 25, 24 hours and have recorded some of the highest trading volumes on Solana based decentralized exchanges. Um, yeah, so maybe in 2023 we should get off yielding and <laughs> we should look into Monero, I think, and uh, stack some more and <laughs> be more careful with the yields because they do look very promising. And yeah, people made money in Bank and Shiba, but be careful. Don't put more than your four to lose. And the hell is Bank, man? I don't even know. Bank. <laughs> There's... Keep, keep moving, man. Let's get through this and yeah, we'll let's jump go. into the spaces. Yep. yep. Uh, and then let's talk about, and then I'll go back to um, El Salvador and then that's it. Uh, so Bank of England answers professionals' questions about upcoming CBDC wallet. Um, of course, England wants a CBDC. They want a wallet proof of concept, POC, for the Bank of England, BOE. Um, and they essentially provided uh, questions about the project, and they have released the questions that they asked um, in this project. They asked uh, like 20 companies, um, I think, no, maybe more. About 20 companies submitted their applications and handed in their questions before December 25th. Uh, following this, the BOE published the questions asked by the competing providers and gave its answers that aimed to offer insights into the project. Um, we're using the POC, which is the proof of concept wallet, to deepen our knowledge and understanding of how CBDC products could possibly interact with each other. Um, and if you want to check it out, if you want to check out the questions, you can click on publish and then uh, you can read all the questions if you go down. Now you can look into it. Um, the last thing that I want to mention is um, El Salvador's Bitcoin strategy involved with the bear market in 2022. Uh, El Salvador made Bitcoin a legal tender, which uh, some people see it as a positive thing. Some people see it as a negative thing. I think it's a positive thing overall um, because it made people more aware of, of uh, Bitcoin. Uh, but of course, they had problems with the um, um, IMF and... Let me see where that was exactly. There we go. El Salvador's uh, credit rating and ties with the IMF have suffered as a result of Bitcoin adoption. Um, local borrowers have been forced to charge higher interest rates as investors have become less willing to lend to the nation. Uh, moreover, to, due to the uh, significant risks to financial and market integrity, financial stability, and consumer protection, the IMF advised El Salvador to revoke Bitcoin's legal under status due to its volatility as well as as its usage in fraud and other criminal um, activities. Um, they're also the uh, poor, they're a poor country with one of the lowest rates of internet uh, using the Americas. And as far as I know, uh, actually a lot of people still don't know about Bitcoin, even though it's a legal tender now. Um, so I'm really curious to see where um, this Bitcoin law that they pass is gonna be headed in 2023 and um, what they're gonna do with the bonds and everything that they, they have created. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see in 2023. Now it's uh, January, but this was a new section, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. The, the links are in the description.
and um yeah we'll see you next week all right man all right awesome thank you tony thank you <laughs> thank all you guys right. enjoy Bye. the rest of your evening <laughs>